As Tom said, I'm Mike Brennan. I'm a product manager for VDI and graphic solutions at Cisco. We're going to talk to you today a little bit about replacing physical graphic workstations, working remotely, and protecting your IP. And when I say IP, I don't mean IP network address. I mean your intellectual property. And Cisco and NVIDIA make it possible with a combination of our two products. So today we're going to talk about some verticals and applications that make sense for uh, workstation replacements. We're gonna talk about why physical versus virtual. What's, what's, how would you know? What do you, how do you make the decision? Then we'll talk about some NVIDIA enabling technologies and then move on to Cisco and NVIDIA solutions and performance data. And then I'll give you a couple of key takeaways and I'll turn it over to my colleague who will do the bottom of the hour. So let's look first at the verticals and applications. So there's five general big verticals that we're looking at here. Architecture, engineering, and construction. You may have heard of that as AEC and manufacturing. And then oil and gas, finance, media and entertainment and geospatial, and healthcare enterprise imaging. So if we look at those architecture, engineering, and construction and manufacturing apps, some of the ISVs that work in that space our Autodesk, and you can see there are apps Revit, which is their architecture app, Formit, 3ds Max, and then right below that is a Siemens PLM app, which is called Siemens NX, and then SolidWorks, a big French company in the design space, uh, their 3D experience apps here in the U.S. SolidWorks is big, Katia is also big worldwide in the design space, and then moving over to oil and gas, you can see the apps there from Har uh, Halliburton. Schlumberger, Petrel, Paradigm, and then on the finance side, Thomson Reuters and Bloomberg apps. And in the media and entertainment space, there's quite a few ISVs there. Autodesk is in there too, again, with Maya, the, the M symbol. Uh, you see Avid, Unreal, Unity, Fusion, and then ArcGIS is the world's leader in geospatial uh, applications. And on the healthcare side, you've seen these guys, I'm sure when you go to you know, visit your doctor or go in for an x-ray, Siemens, GE Health, Agfa, and Philips are the big names there. So all these ISVs have uh, graphic workstations for their designers and engineers that we can now virtualize, which is a good thing given, you know, the state that the world's in now, it's, it's, it's more difficult to get back to the office to work. So <clears throat> physical or virtual, that's the question. So if we look at physical graphic workstations, the pros are the user gets what they always want. <clears throat> Nobody likes to tell them to, to have somebody come and say, I'm taking something away from you. I'm gonna take that uh, $20,000 uh, graphic workstation from underneath your desk, and I'm gonna replace it with a $1,500 uh, terminal that I'm gonna, that's gonna sit on your desk. Everybody likes the idea of having their own CPUs, their own memory, one or more graphics card that they have control of under their desk, and local drives. <clears throat> the cons are the cost of the acquisition and the warranty cost for those things is very high. And the IT team has to maintain the core operating system. They have to install the apps. They have to maintain those apps. The biggest problem with these physical graphics workstations are, depending on the user you are and the models that you work on, is file upload and download time. So in order to use these very large files, in most cases, the user actually downloads the model from the data center. And depending on the model size, it can take five to 10 minutes or it can take up to an hour. And they have to do that on the way down and on the way up. And then you have to do security updates on that same device. And then the user has to physically be there to be able to use this device. Now I recognize that there are tools or IT tools to help with some of these maintenance activities and there's methodologies like PC Anywhere to be able to remote into your uh, workstation at work. The trouble is most of these uh, applications and the, and the companies that use them are highly secure and most won't allow remote access to these devices. So when COVID happened and people shut down their, their workplaces, there was a huge, huge problem where people could not get to the physical workstations they needed to do their work. So let's look at virtual graphic workstations. If you look at the pros, very similar to the pros for the physical. So that when we do VDI, we generally oversubscribe the CPUs, generally don't oversubscribe the memory, but CPU oversubscription is normal. 
For graphic workstations, we do not do that. So we use high frequency, high core count uh, CPUs and allocate those CPUs without oversubscribing them. Sometimes some customers use the physical core. So if you have a 24 core, three gigahertz processor, they won't allocate more than 24 off of that processor. Others use the hyper-threading uh, capabilities and they'll go to 48. But the more powerful the workstation needs to be, the less likely that they're gonna use hyper-threading and the more likely you're gonna just allocate physical cores to these desktops. One or more powerful data center grade graphics cards. So virtualization, thanks to the NVIDIA technology now, we can actually give a virtual desktop or virtual graphic workstation more than one GPU. We can certainly give it a fractional GPU, but it's easy to give it multiple GPUs if that's what's needed. And then the cool thing about the virtual graphic workstation is it's attached to the enterprise storage. It lives in the same data center that the enterprise storage lives in. So on the con side, which I've kind of crossed off the cons because these are really pros as well, because the storage and the virtual machine are in the same place, no more download time. You don't have to download the models. You don't have to upload them. No more security updates on all these virtual machines. Everything stays in the data center where the intellectual property is protected. And users can get secure access from anywhere. And it depends, I mean, there's a lot of different ways we can do it at Cisco. We can use VPN tunnels, we can use secure SSL. It doesn't really matter, uh, but we can get you access to that uh, virtual machine. So let's look at some of the NVIDIA enabling technologies. So I wanna look back to Q3 of calendar year 18. So a little less than two years ago, NVIDIA introduced their Quadro RTX line of cards. They introduced a Quadro RTX 6000 and 8000. These were actively cooled cards. They introduced a new architecture called Touring. Uh, and these cards are full length, uh, dual slot, 300 watt BMS, right? Uh, they have their own fans built in, uh, very power hungry. They went into physical workstations and the engineers at the high end of the range really loved them. Trouble was you couldn't put those into a server because it, dis it would disrupt the airflow in a data center server. So we couldn't use them at that time. And then in Q4, just a quarter later in the same year, they introduced the NVIDIA T4 card. This is a passively cool card built on the same exact touring architecture, a half length single slot, 75 watt card. So there's some advantages there that you can see right off the bat on power and cooling. Uh, and I'll tell you more about that architecture as we come up. So then in Q4 of calendar year 19, NVIDIA launched the passively cooled RTX. So the RTX 6000 with 24 gigs of frame buffer, passively cooled, all the same features as the RTX actively cooled card, but it was built for a server. So we had the airflow correct so we could cool the GPUs as well as the CPUs and memory. Same quarter, they introduced the 8000. The difference there, uh, 48 gigs. Instead of eight gigs on the slide, it's actually 48 gigs, uh, same exact architecture and footprint as the actively cooled cards. And then now um, in this quarter calendar, in the next day or two here, we're gonna launch our support for the RTX 6 and 8000 in both our UCS 2U rack server, the UCS C240 M5. And in the third quarter, we'll introduce it in our hyperconverged platform, Hyperflex. So we can now support in that, in that platform, the 2U rack server, up to six T4 cards and up to two RTX 6 or 8,000 cards. So here's, here's kind of the cool part of this new touring architecture that was introduced back at the end of 2018. In the past, NVIDIA had really one GPU processing complex. It was built on CUDA cores. And those CUDA cores did parallel processing and were really well uh, adapted for visualization. In the Turing architecture, NVIDIA introduced tensor cores and RT cores or ray tracing cores. So those first three lines, if you look at three, you'll see that the T4 is really essentially half of the RTX cards in terms of compute horsepower. So keep that in mind. The differentiator is 
the memory, the amount of memory on the board, 16 gigs of frame buffer on the T4, 24, and 48. And then the ray casting, that two more lines down, that's a measure of what those RT cores do. The T4 is five gig arrays. The RTX cards are 10 and 11, respectively. Now, what the secret sauce that NVIDIA really uh, invented, along with the cards, is their software, their G virtual GPU software. And the, the one that I have boxed out there is called Quadro VDWS. The VDWS stands for Virtual Data Center Workstation. This is the software we need to run these uh, virtual graphic workstations. And if you look, it supports desktop virtualization, both Windows and Linux uh, virtual machine operating systems. It supports the NVIDIA native graphic driver and the NVIDIA Quadro driver. And I'll tell you why that's important in just a second. And then, it, 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 as I mentioned before, it's multi vGPU and NVLink. NVLink is NVIDIA's technology to physically connect two cards or more together into a, in a server or a workstation platform. And then it supports error correction and page retirement. On the bottom on the display, the big distinction with the Quadro cards is it supports up to four 5K cards or two 8K cards. The other software packages that come along with it won't do that, won't do the 5K or the 8K. And the maximum resolution is massive, 7680 by 4302. On the right side, under the professional features, the ISV certifications under Quadro is a really big one. Here's why. You think about all those apps that I showed you on that slide that had the five verticals that we play in. NVIDIA has been making Quadro graphics cards for a very long time. All the ISVs certify the Quadro drivers. We use the same Quadro drivers in the virtual graphics cards that we do in the physical cards. So all the certifications from the ISV carry over into the uh, virtualized world, which is really big. And it supports the NVIDIA CUDA and OpenCL standards, which is also important. And it supports the Invi NVIDIA encoder, the NVNC, OpenGL, WebGL. Uh, the, it, has, it supports all the Quadro op optimizations that are in the standard Quadro cards, DirectX, and it even supports uh, AMD Vulkan uh, API. So it's got really broad coverage uh, that, that makes it possible to run all of those apps. And the maximum frame buffer obviously is the 48 gigs, which is the RTX 8000. But if you look at the available profiles, the Quadro VDWS gives you the broadest coverage of the profiles. So the customer is free to choose whichever profile best suits their particular user. So now let's take a look at the combination of Cisco and NVIDIA and how, how, we're, how we are synergistically better together. So Cisco combines UCS and Hyperflex with NVIDIA GPUs and the Quadro VDWS software into our, we have bundles I'll show you in a little while to make it easy for customers to order. Cisco UCS, which Hyperflex is built on top of, so it gets the same benefits. It overcomes a lot of key IT challenges we offer a wide range of platforms. We can put the T4 cards in a 1U rack server. We have uh, the 2U rack server that can handle more, uh, plus the RTX cards. We simplify IT operation and it's all policy driven. So 11 years ago, right now we introduced UCS, which was revolutionary at the time. It was software to find everything. Our hardware to this day ships with no burnt in anything. It's completely stateless. And we leverage the subject matter experts and organizations to build policy around network storage and compute. And we combine those policies into what we call a service profile. And that service profile can be assigned to the server. It'll assign MAC addresses, it'll assign UUIDs, it'll assign a host bus adapter, WWNs, WWPNs. It assigns everything. And the beauty of that system is you build those profiles once and you deploy them as many times as you need to. And that gives you two benefits. The first is we can deploy our servers to fully configured and ready for a hypervisor or bare metal install in 20 minutes after it's connected uh, to power in our, you know, our fabrics. Uh, and second, every time you deploy that service profile, you get consistent application. So there's no run books, there's no human intervention, there's no uh, 
data center engineer who forgot step 347 in the configuration runbook. Uh, and what that gives us is the ability to deliver consistent performance. So that's a, that's a really um, important feature of UCS and why we've grown as, as fast as we have. So once you have that compute platform in place, you install the hypervisor on top of it, and then you install a VIB from NVIDIA that allows the hypervisor to see the cards and be able to deliver the cards in a, either a holistic way or a fractional way. And then you install, you create virtual machines, you, ins, you assign uh, PCI virtual devices to that virtual machine, and then the guest OS, when it loads, can see that uh, PCI device as if it was a physical device once you install the NVIDIA graphics driver. And once you get to that point, those ISV applications get loaded on top, and they think they're running with a Quadro card on them. And that's, that's a big deal because they're, it's supported. You can get tech support from the ISVs and you get the performance that the Quadro drivers deliver. And from there, these virtual machines running in the data center can connect to anything. It can connect to Android or iOS based phones. It can connect to tablets, certainly to PCs. Uh, and it can do it from virtually anywhere using a, a wide variety of different uh, security protocols to get there. So what are the benefits uh, of virtualizing these gra graphic workstations on UCS and Hyperflex? Reduce CapEx and OpEx. Those, those machines that uh, you buy as a, a graphic workstation can cost anywhere from 5,000 on the low end to 20,000 on the high end. Uh, we, can, we have studies out there that'll show that you know, virtualizing are much more cost effective. Uh, we can accelerate the performance by pairing the right CPU with the right GPU. So the NVIDIA GPUs work synergistically with the CPUs and memory on board, as well as the storage subsystems. So by pairing the right processors with the right GPU cards and the right workload, we can deliver really good performance. And as I talked about in our service profiles, we can deploy our hardware faster, it gives us the ability to consolidate workloads in our UCS domains, and we can uh, also virtualize desktop and application deployment and manage our hardware platform with our Intersight platform, our Intersight uh, internet-based management system. Now, Hyperflex, I didn't talk too much about. It's our hyper-converged offer. Obviously, it, it combines compute, network, and storage all in one platform. It's an automated deploy. The customer fills out a questionnaire electronically when he brings the Hyperflex cluster online. Once things like user credentials, uh, VLANs, network uh, subnets, and things like that are provided, the system itself deploys. It comes with the hypervisor already installed, so the workload is ready to install on top of that. And it's both platforms give us this ability to protect that intellectual property, and we can scale to meet the demand as demand goes up. So those are some of the benefits of uh, Cisco, uh, UCS, and Hyperflex. So here are the three kinds of users, and I think we have agreement with NVIDIA on this. It's not universal across every single app. Some of the definitions move around a little bit, and we do change the requirements for each, each one as we go from app to app. But in general, three types of users. Light, these are people that are primarily read-only. They could be project managers or people that do documentations on products that are being built. They work on small subsets of the entire entity. And then the medium user does some design work along with read-only, and they're basically in the small to medium assembly area. And we kind of group these people together uh, into a C240 M5 mainstream virtual graphic workstation. And the heavy user are the de designers and renderers. They work on large sub-assemblies or even the full model in some cases. They need a more powerful platform to work on, and we group them into a category we call C240 M5 heavy virtual graphic workstation. So here's a little data to show you uh, some differences. So spec in performance, spec view per 13 is from the spec committee. It's a benchmark tool that runs uh, nine different applications in a sequence. Uh, and if you run it in benchmark mode, it will output information about performance across these nine different apps. And you can post it on the spec uh, committee site. And the objective there is really for the, it's really was built for physical graphic workstation benchmarks. 
um, so that different manufacturers could put their results from that benchmark test up there. For virtual machines, it's not that useful because we're mostly designing to one of those key applications. So we, we take it out of benchmark mode and we run a single application. So what I'm showing you here is SpecView Perf 13 running SolidWorks. So here this, uh, this graphic shows two different cards, a T4 and a 4Q, a single VM running and a maximum VM running, running the NVIDIA best effort scheduler with the frame rate limiter on with a Xeon processor in it. So we, both machines have the same compute backbone, it's just the cards and the profiles are different. So in the world of virtual desktops and virtual workstations, we're restricted to a maximum of 60 frames per second. That's as fast as you can go. SolidWorks doesn't go that fast in this benchmark. Other applications do. So you would, recommend, you would hope to see something above 30 frames per second, up to 60 as the single VM with a particular profile. As you can see with SolidWorks, the fastest it'll go, regardless if you have a 2Q, a 4Q, or a 24Q or a 48Q profile, is 44 frames per second. So that's kind of like the baseline. Then we say to ourselves, okay, if we put more than one card in here and run as many VMs as we can at that profile, what does that do? Uh, because a single VM with a best effort scheduler will give the VM the whole card to run. It's essentially a single VM getting all the GPU horsepower. So when we put multiple uh, VMs there, we wanna make sure that we still get adequate performance. And as you can see with the 2Q profile on the T4 card, we get 35 frames per second. In a movie theater, when you go see a movie, you're running at 24 to 30. So we can get over 30 frames per second. We, we're pretty gonna have pretty happy end users. And keep in mind, we're gonna, we're gonna position the T4 for those light and medium users. So 35 frames per second or 38 or 39 frames per second is gonna be good performance for them. For the RTX 8000 and 6000, these are the big heavy hitters. These are the people we could assign a whole card to. A 24Q profile on an RTX 8000 is half the card. A 48Q is the whole card. We could put two cards on it, depending on what they're doing. The guys at places like Boeing and Ford that look at really big designs, really big models, a full car, these guys are using multiple RTX cards in their virtual machine to get the performance they want. But in any event, you can kind of see the relative performance here. We're well over the 30 frames per second, even with a maximum number of VMs running. So it's kind of our proof point that we're in good shape. Finally, we got these graphic workstation solution bundles. So to make things easier, make things faster for ordering, we have two bundles, that mainstream uh, VGW and the heavy duty. The difference is the cards that are in it and the memory. So they both bundles use the 6248R processors, high core count, high frequency processors, depending on the, you know, the medium gets 384 gigs of RAM as a starter, and the heavy gets 576 gigs. The mainstream one uses six T4 cards. The heavy duty uses two RTX or RTX six or 8,000 cards. And these make it easy for our, our sellers and our partners to create a configuration for a customer. They can modify it at that point and go to order really quickly. It takes all the guesswork out of trying to configure a graphics workstation. So as far as uh, takeaways and more information, you can see us at cisco.com, go VDI or go NVIDIA, both on our website and learn more. And then overall, you know, the key takeaway is you can enable professional graphic app users to work and collaborate from anywhere. The technology's here now, three years ago it wasn't here, but everything's come together with the touring architecture on NVIDIA the faster processors with higher core counts from Intel combined to make this work really well. And Cisco is one of the few vendors that give you choice on your performance. You can use Cisco UCS converged infrastructures, or you can use Cisco Hyperflex hyperconverged system. And Cisco is the only vendor out there that can give you the broadest security and networking capabilities to deliver these virtual machines from anywhere on any device. And then in the bottom left there, you know, thing, you know, the delivery paradigms are shifting. 
People don't want to wait for long periods of time to get things done. They can't. Now with COVID-19, you got to be able to act quickly. Complex bills of material have to be simplified. We have to be able to automate the ordering. That's kind of what our bundles were for that I, sh I, I showed you earlier. And we have to shorten the time to deploy the solution. So our advanced services team now known as customer experience from Cisco has offers for the customer that'll get their VDI environment up with virtual workstations in a week. And that's really fast compared to the old days. And the last thing I want you to remember is Cisco Intersight. It's intelligent cloud management. It's gonna move our management plane from our specialized switches in the data center to the cloud to allow our customers to manage their systems securely from the internet. So I actually have a question, uh, Mike. I know that there's been some strategic things that have been going on with NVIDIA recently. Uh, how do you expect that to play out given the relationship that you guys have right now? Do you, do you see this continuing to go forward in a, in a positive way? Well, I think on the visualization side, there's no question that it's, uh, you know, we're in good shape there. Uh, we don't have any conflicts. We're actually a great partner for NVIDIA on visualization because we don't, unlike some of our competitors, we don't manufacture graphic workstations or PCs that would use, uh, you know, where there's competing interests there. Other areas uh, where there's potential conflict or you know, they're possible, but it's not for me to comment on those. I'm, I'm just not the right guy to give you a comment on that. But very, very positive on the visualization side. We have a lot going on with NVIDIA there, and uh, I expect that will continue. So one of the uh, big um, kind of points that, that we kind of went by quickly earlier was uh, the OpenCL and, and kind of really all of those all of those hooks for machine learning. So this this obviously would, would is great for exactly what you're talking about with that the the, the remote um, um, you know use for CAD or what have you. But there's also uh, you know the the obvious. I, I guess, or at least when I see that, the, the, the glaring thing is, it seems like this is this is an ideal solution for you know large machine learning data sets, things along those lines. Uh, what's what's the approach there? So there's a there's a different group that works on AI and ML. It's a it's a big team like mine, uh, and they focus you know strictly on AI ML. So you're absolutely right. Uh, the V Compute server is the latest addition to the NVIDIA hard or software line that allows fractional use of GPUs for traditional machine learning uh, or artificial intelligence applications. So Cisco, we have, a, we have support for all of the NVIDIA cards that do the AI ML. Uh, we have plans to do the A100 card when it comes out in PCI format. As you may know, we have a eight uh, GPU uh, machine learning artificial intelligence server, the C480ML, which can be used with the vCompute server side. So, you know, your observation is absolutely correct. Um, I just don't focus in that area. So I was, I was really focused today on the visualization side uh, and the applications that we use there, but it's, a, it's an absolutely very fast growing um, application space on the AIML side.